Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here with Captain Dan Blanchard, who is the CEO of Uncruise Adventures. Now, we talked to Captain Dan uh, last year uh, when he was just about ready to uh, launch perhaps the only cruise ship uh, in Alaska at that time. And unfortunately, it worked for a few days, and then uh, COVID caught up with it. Although, actually, there was no COVID, but we can get into that. And now we're here back in 2021, and it looks like um, Uncruise Adventures might be one of the few cruise lines to cruise Alaska yet again, uh, because uh, Canada now has banned uh, the big ships from porting in Canadian ports. And of course, under the current US law, you can't just sail from Seattle up to Anchorage or Ketchikan or any of those wonderful Alaska towns. So it's gonna be difficult. So, so once again, Uncruise could be one of the only ways your clients could get up to Alaska this year because they're American owned and built and um, they offer cruises up there all the time out of Juneau and, and, and really beautiful cruises. So we're gonna to talk to him about that and a whole lot more about Uncruise on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, as I always ask, uh, how are you and where are you? The last time we were there, you were painting your offices. So I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> well, James, I am in Seattle today, although I just got back from Alaska. So, uh, and you're right. Uh, you know, part of our reimagining uncruise was my my fiance uh, and longtime girlfriend uh, Megan painted our entire offices out, along with another friend. To, so, when crew came back, we were be looking good. So, yeah, I've got a lot of yellow going on right now in my office. Yeah, no, the last time we could see your, but one of the two of them was, was running in back of you. And I'm like, who is that person with the paint? No, so like, <laughs> but it led color. This is Zoom. We can do whatever we want, right? That's so, right. That's right. <laughs> now, now, let's talk about, you know, last year, as I mentioned, you were set to be the only cruise line to sail in Alaska waters. And then you had to cancel because a, a, a passenger who had tested positive, positive, that, no, he tested negative. Then he tested positive after four days into the cruise. And then, of course, the upshot was he tested negative again when you got back to Juneau. But you decided at that point to kind of uh, postpone the rest of the season. And now we're heading into 21. Uh, this year, uh, you may be one of the only lines to sail in Alaska. How did that happen? Well, you know, as you described, James, it is um, a situation of flag. So uh, we are a U.S. flag company, U.S. built boats, U.S. crew, pay U.S. Ta you know, all that stuff. Right. And because the cabotage law is, is designed to level the playing field between foreign and domestic operators, um, that requires that large ships of foreign flag and, and staff uh, make it an international voyage when right. traveling between states. So this, this uh, what's happened with Canada, and I would say it's not just Canada, it's, it's it, obviously that Canada is just the technical stop, which has effectively been there for 50 right. years. Um, we just think of a boarding or, or port call, but effectively it's always been a technical stop. That has been removed, as we know, and, and the, the opportunity to get the, any adjustment in the Passenger Vessel Services Act is probably quite remote. Right. So I, I'll tell you, though, I never dreamed in all my years that, uh, you know, we've been at this 26 years now, and we will be the largest operator of cruises <laughs> in Alaska for the first time in history. <laughs> and we'll, offer, we'll have more, more entries in, into Glacier Bay than anybody in the world. Now, who do you pay off in Canada to have this happen again in 22? <laughs> well, I don't really want that to happen. And, you know, we can talk about the PVSA and then in the technical stops and all this kind of thing. But I am also a I am a supporter of a very short term four month waiver uh, just because, you know, I'm an Alaskan and, and not having the ships yeah. come is just detrimental. It's to got to be. I mean, you, you do a great job, but uh, believe me, your your 80 passengers or whatever it is on your ships is not going to uh, help them out as much. It'll help, but it's you need the rest of them, too. Yeah, I know. It's a, the economy is built on the large foreign cruise ship trade. And uh, while I could sit there and say, yes, I agree with so many that the PBSA needs to be altered for the long term benefit of of both U.S. and foreign uh, entities, this year we just need to get the ships up there if we can. But we also have the CDC thing, which is yeah, uh, that's another. You know, so we really got that to, yeah. <laughs> really have three elements. You have the element of the Canada ban, you have the element of the PVSA, and then you have the element of CDC. 
And, you know, I've been told by my, my friends in the cruise ship industry, the large ships that, you know, they need to, they pretty much need to have the word go right, right now uh, in order to activate the few ships that are down in LA. It's almost a done deal. The ships from Asia aren't going to be here. Um, I mean, we're, they're, they're past their time limit, right? Right. So you don't think so. Even this uh, recent thing where some members of Congress got together and wrote a letter to the ambassador to Canada asking, could they just stop and not get off at these ports? And I guess my reaction was, if I was Canadian, was saying, well, could you not just alter your law uh, to, to make it easier? I, I don't know if there's going to be any receptivity uh, in Canada, even though they're hurting too. I mean, it was great for Vancouver and Victoria on the, uh, uh, on the Alaska runs uh, to have those ships go there. I know I, I often look forward to stopping in Victoria so I can see the Bouchard Gardens and all that, you know, the famous stops. And Vancouver's a lovely city. Uh, and then, of course, the whole issue was New England and Canada cruises, too, where uh, those are kind of done deal now unless they because they can't they can't they can't sail to New England without going again uh, to uh, a foreign port. So do you think there's any shot that Canada is going to relent a little bit on this or not? Well, first of all, I think that's the only shot. And, okay. and the reason being is the Passenger Vessel Services Act, the only way that it's by law that you can uh, get by that is for national defense. And this is not a national defense issue. Mm-hmm. And then you also have to take all those foreign workers and register them as U.S. workers, pay U.S. taxes, which is fair enough, right? But I, so I think the only real option is for Canada to provide some kind of technical stop. And I, as much as I support my own uh, leaders in the federal government, uh, Murkowski, Sullivan, and Young, who have all written in, these are Alaskans, right. you know, trying to seek some moderation from Canada on this, I think it's highly unlikely. I think it's even more unlikely that we'll, we'll get a waiver to the PSVA, Passenger Zeppelin. Passenger Vessel Services Act. Well, why don't we just call it the Jones Act anyway, even though that's totally incorrect. But that's yeah, it is incorrect. <laughs> but but oftentimes, as you everybody, know, being in the industry, everybody, industry, everybody, everybody wraps it. it. Yeah, 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 everybody yeah, calls yeah, it the yeah. Jones Act, and I'm like, no, no, it's not the Jones Act. I know it's yeah. it's hard. It's a hard. I, I stumble over it all the time, and it's like yeah. an act dating from like 1890s or something, right? <laughs> Because we love those rules that, that were done about over 100 years ago, right? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, you know, if you want to go into it, I'll tell you why those rules were really put in place. But, uh, but that's a longer conversation. Yeah, well, we, we could have a whole, whole series on that. Well, maybe we'll yeah, do another one yeah. on that one. There we uh, go. Let, let's talk about your line because that's most important here. Uh, what's your cruising plan this year for Alaska, uh, ideally given that you'll be able to go with the CDC with the COVID? Uh, when will you start your Alaska season? Uh, very soon. Uh, we'll start uh, our first boat out of Alaska proper will be May 16th. Right. And our first boat departing Seattle on an inside passage cruise is May 10th. Um, there's no indication that we're going to have any uh, regulatory issues with that. Uh, we fall under the CDC uh, threshold. Uh, State of Alaska and all the towns right. are opening us with welcome, you know, big arms. Obviously, they want us. And so we don't believe there's going to be any problem activating. It's just a point of how do we respond to this ever-changing world of COVID and vaccinations right. to make the boat uh, safe for our, our crew and for our guests. No, absolutely. It's, it's, it's important. And like obviously you had the, the blip last year where, you know, faulty COVID tests. So that's, this, is, this is an issue. Can, can you hopefully the tests will get more, uh, be more correct getting forward. Uh, I know, you know, it's, it is a big issue and it's happened to a few cruise lines. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about, are you going to be cruising any other regions other than Alaska this year? Or are you going anywhere else? Yeah, we actually start out on April 30th, uh, out of, uh, in the Salish sea, which is, you know, Washington state area. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be operating in late August on the Columbia and snake rivers, uh, Hawaii in November, and then right down the line, you know, we, we have a, our first trip in the Gulf Coast on April 30th, um, the, uh, since restart, I should say. Right. And then we go down to Costa Rica, Panama, and Belize oh, wow. uh, starting in, uh, in October. So, okay. uh, yeah, so we, we're, we're planning that, you know, this restart is showing every sign that this is going to be a true restart uh, going forward. Yeah. Now, uh, are there any other competition for you up there? Anybody else going? 
Well, yeah. I mean, I and, and there's certainly competitions, but I, I will be very clear to say they are also some of my best friends. And, okay. uh, you know, so uh, you may recall, James, we started a, a small ship, ship coalition right. of U.S. flag operators because, you know, back in March of last year, there was talk that no cruise entity was going to get subsidy. Right. And so we came together as U.S. flag operators and created this coalition. I'm really happy to say that my friends at Alaska Dream Cruises, another Alaska-owned business, are going to be operating on a Sitka. Uh, Lindblad Expeditions is going to be operating throughout Southeast Alaska. American Cruise Lines. Uh, I mean, those are the the, the primary uh, small ship U.S. flags. Right. But then there are just a plethora of small you know, 10, 12, 20 passenger uh, boats that are kind of like individual charter yachts and that kind of thing. That, right. So, so there will be activity. And I, I'm happy to say that, that the, with these small ships and yachts and the FIT business that's coming to Alaska, our hotels in Southeast Alaska will probably be just as busy as normal because they don't really get affected by the large cruise ship traffic. Yeah, so you'll, they'll actually be staying in those hotels uh, as opposed yeah. to uh, uh, just getting on and off a, a, a large ship. Uh, exactly. Now, now, so so what? What so far? What are bookings looking like for your Alaska sailings? Uh, do you think you've been hurt by these incorrect reports that the entire Alaska season for all lines has been canceled because of the Canada ban? You know, initially, I think that was true, and uh, you know, it. I would say the. The first few days afterwards, we had our own guests calling up and hey, maybe for the first couple of weeks even saying, gosh, uh, we understand there's no ships running in Alaska. We hate to do this. We're going to cancel our trip. And Oh, hold the, hold the show. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we going, got out. Going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've been pretty vocal. I've been pretty vocal out there with a number of press conferences that have gotten good coverage for the U S flag group. So, but, but it is still a mixed bag because the general message is no cruises in, in Alaska, right? That's what people hear. And, uh, so we've been really working hard. I will say uh, we did in the last three weeks, we have seen a lift in business, okay. whether that's directly rated related to the ban or just the rising tide, you know, it's kind of like you, this is our late, a really very late wave season right now. <laughs> um, and some of those patterns are continuing just three months late. Yeah, so no, so hopefully, hopefully that will continue, and you'll get an uptick, especially since there are really not many other options for people to go to Alaska. And you've always had a great option anyway uh, for those who wanted really smaller ships and not having that large cruise experience. So uh, hopefully, you'll now you know people will realize that and say, hey, if I want to go to Alaska this year, it's got to be with you or one of uh, your other uh, members of that association that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, and for us, I, I will say that the last week has brought has brought a lot of those cruise ship bookings. Um, so we had, you know, I would say it was actually a flood last week and early right. this week, just because now, you know, Princess Hal and Seaborn all went out, uh, a yeah, week I saw ago. That. yeah and, and officially canceled. Right. So, yeah. And I think we're going to see another round of that shortly. Yeah. Well, Princess and Holland America, the, the two big kahunas up there. And then once they did it, uh, and the seaboard was going to be up there for a while. And I think everybody else will probably follow, unfortunately, for, for the Alaska season. Yeah. And unfortunately for Alaska, I think, because obviously, as you mentioned before, uh, this is an important, you know, tourism and cruise ship traffic is important to Alaska. Uh, so you're, you're going to have to get a, a passengers are going to spend a lot more money when they're once they're up in Alaska, right? You know, they, <laughs> well, it is true. I mean, you know, obviously every travel agent is, you know, that have a lot of their, their new income based on Alaska this summer on cruise ships is rushing. They're panicking, trying to find space. Yeah. So sometimes they don't look at our website and find out that, you know, this isn't your six ninety nine or five ninety nine cruise for, no. for seven nights where, you know, four times that cost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so it, it is a, actually it's a better deal for them on commission basis if they can get it. Well, this is true. This is true. If they can convert it, which many are, I'm happy to say. Well, let's hope that, that they do much more convergence. Now, I believe you'll have uh, six boats uh, sailing in Alaska this year. That's the plan. Uh, what, yeah. What? Okay. Is that true? Yeah. 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 So we have six of our small ships sailing in Alaska. We do have a seventh in kind of reserve mm -hmm. uh, in case the market gets, goes really, you know, strong. Uh, right now, I would say, you know, that's uh, probably not going to happen, but we're happy to get the boats sailing up at near capacity otherwise, right? Yeah, no, and, and that's great to have that many, you know, boy, that's, it's like the, now how, how many in your total fleet? 
Uh, we have a total of eight that we own and, okay. and one that we lease. Okay. Uh, or you have a yeah. little in reserve if you want, but for the most part, yeah. it's going to be the bulk of the fleet will be in Alaska this summer. For sure. Yeah. Um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, what itineraries they'll follow. Um, you know, what, 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 uh, what will they be doing? Well, you know, the, we have really almost all of our normal itineraries. We have the inside passage trips to right. and from Seattle to Juneau. Uh, we have Alaska's Glacier Bay Adventure Tour, which is two, two days in Glacier Bay National Park, which is awesome. We have our, our Catch Canada Juneau, our fjords tour, which goes through the inland fjords and glaciers really tight. Um, so those, uh, 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 along with some other itineraries that uh, you know circumnavigate Admiralty Island, all of them are either week, 12-day, two-week trips. And so it's, it's quite an assortment of, of departures. Uh, most depart from, from Juneau, Sitka, right. or Ketchikan. Yeah. Although you did say yeah, one is going, uh, the first, one of the first ones out is going from Seattle, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we start our Pacific Northwest trips. We operate for three or four weeks before that boat goes to Alaska. Uh, and yeah, so our last boat arrives in Alaska on June 4th. Okay, great. Now let's talk again. I mean, this is a this is a topic you do normally, but uh, what are the advantages of small ship, small boat Alaska cruising compared to the big ones? Uh, you, you know, it's, and especially now that the bigger ones can't get back there this year. Well, you know, it's it's the difference between a, a large hotel and an intimate mountain lodge, right? And so, you know, it, and I'm not begrudging to either. I think that they both have a place and time for every human being. So what you get on a small U.S. flag vessel is obviously you get Americans. You get uh, English speaking, culturally understand everything that's going on, and a high level of local expertise. A lot of our crew come from Alaska, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, but, the, but the other bigger part that maybe identifies Uncruise Adventures a little differently is is we are really as much in the adventure trade as we are in the cruise trade. So in other words, if you, uh, we, we thought James early on, I think I mentioned this before, we, we toyed with the name Sea Lodge because <laughs> we're kind of like that, that mountain lodge that you just stay in and, oh, it's next to a lake today, but tomorrow it's at the foot of a mountain. And the next day, you know, it's on a river and you just stay in the same lodge. So if you kind of picture that, and then during the day, we do a hub and spoke of a lot of activity. And whether somebody wants to sit in the hot tub and watch their grandkids go out and kayak or hike or snorkel or, or you know, take a, a skiff ride uh, sure. for half the day. There's just a lot of kind of soft adventure up to, I would say, a higher level adventure too, depending on what the guest desires. Well, let's do it right now. Let's just rename your ships. I mean, Sea Lodge Adventures, Sea Lodge Cruises. <laughs> it's it's now, and well, let's let's go to market. Come on, let's go. Uh, you know. Well, you never know. It was a it was a name uh, a name we seriously looked at, and uh, in fact, one of my uh, just on a business point, some of our limited liability corporations that own the vessels. One of them is called Sea Lodge. There so you there go. you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, now let's talk about one thing you mentioned earlier about, uh, do you think the spread of vaccinations around the U.S. is going to have an effect on your business, especially since, you know, many of your clients uh, now qualify to get vaccines. They're the, sometimes you mentioned families, but the grand grandfather, the grandparents, uh, they're probably 65 plus and, and they're going to be on it, maybe with their grandkids. Uh, and now it appears the U.S. may have 300 million vaccines available by the end of May, just as your season is beginning. Uh, do you think that's going to have an impact on your? Yes. <laughs> Man, I am telling you, I, I am a believer. <laughs> and I mean that in the sense, James, that I believe we're turning a corner. And, um, you know, for instance, we already know. And, and if you look at me, I'm going to be 62 here pretty soon. Right. And, and I am our client. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't say that 26 years ago when I started the business. But today I can say I'm my client. We, I, I didn't, you know, I'm still active. I still ride my bike. I walk to work three miles each way. All the things that your and my generation is so much different than our parents' generation. Yeah. And, and so we're living a much more active life uh, and, and want more experiential travel. So the good thing about what's happening with the pandemic is that these COVID uh, vaccinations are out there so far in, in our going out to guests and finding out, you know, 
who's getting vaccinations, what the response is. The surveys coming back have been huge. Wow. Vaccinations. We love them. We'll travel when we get vaccinated. And uh, we've been emphatically requesting they get vaccinated. I'm working with my senators in Alaska right now to uh, ask that Alaska follow federal legislation so I can get my young crew members vaccinated. Um, and so if there, there's a chance that as, as this tide of vaccinate, vaccination, vaccinations okay. lift all ships, that you know, we could be like so many others uh, headed down a path at some point of saying, you know, we're going to go vaccination only crews because that. Well, that, we that was that, that was my next possible. question. You know, yeah. obviously, some some even members of your association, like uh, American Queen, Victory Cruise Line, came out and man, are mandating vaccines for guests as of July one. And I, I believe, uh, you know, John Wagner, who's the CEO there, got a little negative feedback from that. Uh, because some travel agents, I know we had comments on our website about it, where, well, maybe I can't get that vaccine. How do I do? And everybody's wondering at that. Although, to be honest with you, if I'm going on one of these ships, I'd be very happy to know that everybody else is vaccinated. Well, yeah. And we, and, and I know, you know, John's a good friend. And I, you know, talked to him over the, the weeks since he made that. And But the reality is more people are booking because of right. the vaccine crews than departing. In other words, there are so many people that hold it in high value. But then, you know, you know me, James. I mean, my I've got crew that have been with me since the beginning. Right. And, you know, this isn't a vacation for them. They're working, trying to make a recovery of their of their lifestyle. Yeah. And I can't I just simply cannot put them in unneeded uh, in an unneeded uh, situation where it's less safe than it could be. So we've been really encouraging our guests to get vaccinations. We're working hard to get our crew vaccinated. So I think that there's strong likelihood that over the next month, we'll probably go the same way that John has. Well, let's hope, hope, hope that works for you. I know, I mean, you and I got an issue. If you lived in New York, you, can't, you and I couldn't get vaccinated because I'm not 65 yet. And yeah. that, that's, that's the, you know, hopefully in the next month, they'll get back down to 55 and then I'll, I'm in the ballpark. Uh, although uh, my, my daughter who's all of 27 just got vaccinated because she's a teacher in new Orleans. Yeah. So, you know, and, she, and for some reason her, her husband, who's a consultant for, uh, you know, as a business consultant, he got vaccinated as well. So, you know, you just have to be sort of standing in the right place at the right time when somebody puts the needle out. So uh, well, and, with you. well, we've, we've had a lot of crew that have gone out and got vaccinated that are in their thirties, forties. And, and what they're, it's the cracks in the wall. It's the, right. it's the big tent uh, vaccination and they get to the end and there's a hundred vaccinations left over. They yeah. got to use them. So, you know, it's uh, in light of that, you know, I get it, uh, but you're right. It is kind of funny how some of these roll out. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm there as soon as I can get vaccinated. I will. And you, as you know, I had COVID, but, uh, I, I think right. the antibodies are about ready to run out from July. So I better, <laughs> I'm, I'm racing against the clock here. Antibodies versus the vaccine. So one yeah, or the yeah, other yeah. will get it. But, uh, <laughs> now, now, one of the things is that, you know, what are the requirements now? I mean, you said maybe you're going to have, have, have a vaccine requirement, although you're encouraging it. Uh, what about the other requirements in terms of the negative tests, the protocols, the things to bo- board a vessel for uncruise at this point? Uh, uh, what, what are those requirements uh, or have you changed them at all since you put implemented them last year? Yeah, you know, they're changing all the time, but I think we're starting to find what will probably be the full program for the summer. And that has a lot to do with vaccinations. It has a lot to do with available testing. Uh, you know, in, last summer, we couldn't even get a test kit on board the boats. Right. Um, then they came out with antigen screening, which, you know, is just okay. And now they have uh, very fast, rapid molecular tests or PCR tests. So it has improved dramatically. I mean, if we had had a PCR kit on board the boat last year, we would have found that guy, that guy had a false positive at the right. airport in Juneau and we would have sailed and probably would have had 10 sailings. But, you know, the market at that time just shut it down with yeah, the well, word COVID, right? That's right. So, but yeah, so, but, to answer your question, sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are still going to require a pre-boarding molecular PCR type test. Right. And then when guests arrive in Juno, they will likely be given, and this is the part that's just going to change in the next few days, they'll likely be given a screen 
uh, which is an antigen screen. And anybody that pops a positive there then gets a molecular test. Mm -hmm. And that's, that will be true whether we go to vaccine cruises or not. And that'll be true for the crew every week. Um, you know, our whole thing is build this as safe as we can. And the, really the, the gold standard is definitely the molecular test. But what the antigen does is it helps filter and take a large group. You can do an antigen on everybody. If you have problems within that group, and you do, you do a molecular test under it. I mean, you're familiar with all this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I just <laughs> went to Ecuador and the Galapagos. I was on a cruise in the Galapagos for four days. And I think I took a total of, during the whole trip of four different tests. And three were PCRs and one was an antigen. To, I, actually, they only require an antigen to come home uh, from Ecuador. Uh, so it was an amazing, you know, and, and the operators were great. Uh, uh, they, they actually got us the test and uh, uh, it was ready in the hotel and it was turned around within hours. Uh, even PCRs, yeah. even PCRs. Um, yeah, yeah, the PCR tests are, uh, as we all know, you know, they're not as, uh, you can't do as big a groups as fast, but you can still do individuals right. in a pretty fast manner. Um, so anyway, that, that plan will go forth and whether we go to a vaccine cruise or not, that, that same process, we're still going to require that. And then, you know, you get down to the question about how about young people and right. we know the vaccination isn't really appropriate for anyone and not even tested for people under 16. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of detail in, in all of that. But beyond that, uh, I, you know, we originally, and this will probably change to in our next version, we originally were not going to stop by some of the small towns like uh, Wrangell and such because we wanted to keep the bubble tight right. during that week. But, you know, Alaska is the safest place on the planet right now for COVID. Right. We are, yeah. uh, we're in Juneau. We're approaching 40%. Haines, uh, Huna. Skagway are going to be at a hundred percent before the end of the month. Wow. Uh, I mean, it is amazing. What's That's hundred percent no cases or, uh, and no, no hospitalizations or anything like that. A hundred percent of people that want to be vaccinated. vaccinated. Wanted to be, want to be vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. That's pretty amazing. And, and we already have communities that are already at that hundred percent level. Right. So, you know, we sit there and go, okay, the communities are now wanting us back. Uh, and if we, if we have most of our guests and most of our crew, if not full vaccinations, we enter a space where now we can go back to Brangle, for instance. And so that's, you know, those are, those are big things as, as a world, as we open up here that are darn exciting. Well, you know, Alaska doesn't have that many people up there. So are you saying I should seek temporary Alaskan citizenship if I want a, a vaccine today? I'll just fly up there, uh, declare myself an Alaskan citizen, and then I can get my vaccine and, and then maybe stay for a while and then come home, right? I got an idea. I have a brother named Jim Blanchard. You could be James Blanchard. There you go. How about we'll go up together and we'll get vaccinated. I'll, I, I'll, I'll say like you're that. visiting me. It's a road trip. You got <laughs> and it. They probably would vaccinate you. Actually, if you came up there, they'd vaccinate you right away. Cause we're, I think we just maybe last night tripped down to 50 or 55. I can't remember. Yeah, I know. Well, in, I tell you in something, Juneau. Yeah. I tell you, something, you, you get me an extra cabin on your first few cruises. And, I, and I, if I still don't have a vaccine by May, I, I may be <laughs> talk to you about that. Uh, well, I, you got it. You got it. <laughs> We, we got to think of an alias for you. It might just be Blanchard at the end. <laughs> well, whatever. I can be whatever you want. As long as it's James or Jim, it's all right. It's, it's okay. All right. Now, uh, is there anything else you want to tell our 85,000 travel advisors out there about Uncruise, about the upcoming Alaska season, and cruising this year and into 2022? Well, I think that, you know, the biggest thing I would say, I think we're all seeing the light of day. Right. And, uh, you know, the variants are not showing that they're getting out of hand at this point. Well, by the end of the month, have a, probably a good handle on if that's going to be true or not. Um, this is a great time to come to Alaska. Yeah. I cruise so. adventures. I mean, can you imagine how little is going on on our waterways and in our forests? This is seeing Alaska like around 1960. Wow. So come back 70 years with me, 50 years, 60 years, and, and visit the Alaska that you'll never see again. And, you know, do it with Uncruise because we have more departures in Glacier Bay and in Southeast Alaska than anyone. 
Well, I'm sold, and hopefully a lot of travel advisors are sold for their clients because this is, again, and I said this last year, you were going to be the only ship at that point going up there. And, you know, and I still have to tell you, I, I respected so much your attitude when all this happened, when you got canceled last year because of COVID. And I, if it me, I'd be like, you know, maybe you were inside, but it, I, was, I would be so upset that it was a negative, a false, wow. a false positive that, that ended the season for you. Because it looked, you know, you said out there, there were four great days. And, you know, the, as you told me at the time, the ratings were great. Everyone's having a great time. This guy, you know, he gets the word about his, his positive test. He does the right thing, goes to the captain. You're all going back to, uh, to Juno and sticking, staying in a hotel, and then you find out the guy's, guy's negative after all. I, I would have been a little peeved, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was obviously upset, yeah. but at the same time, this is no one's fault. This yeah. is the early part of the pandemic when wow. testing wasn't available everywhere, when you know people were being trained on how to use this stuff at airports that weren't sure. necessarily medical professionals. So, you know, you just have to say, well, you know, this is the punch we take and let's move forward. And, uh, and, but I will say we learned a lot in that experience and almost all of those guests, you know, Alaska only had 48 cruise people in the <laughs> entire year last year. Now they're 48. Yeah. And my people. <laughs> and, but, but I will tell you, most all of them are coming back this year out of that 48. Oh, and, great. And, uh, oh, so, so you're and so we're, they're going to finish up the good thing they started, but this time we'll have a, a ability to have a molecular test on board, right? Oh, that'll be great. No, that'd be great. Well, hopefully you're not going to run into any challenges like that. And hopefully more people, uh, the people who get on the ships uh, are going to be vaccinated, as you mentioned. Uh, it sounds like a, it's going to be a great year and a great time, as you said, to go to Alaska. Uh, certainly, whether, you know, UnCruise has a perfect product for it right now, and it's going to be a unique year because, you know, for, for Alaska's sake, let's hope that the big ships will be back next year. Yes. Uh, yes. Because that is important to the state. Uh, you have a very different product. Uh, some people want to have a big ship experience and do the kind of, I mean, I've, I have never done the big, big ships, but I've done you know, kind of moderate, uh, moderate size luxury ship up there. Uh, I had a great time. I loved it. It was a different cruise. It was 10 days out of San Francisco uh, on, on the glacier, you know, glacier, glacier passage, things like that. And it was just, uh, uh, it was a great experience. It's the only time I've been, but uh, your, your, your product is to completely different and it's a different kind, as you say, it's a boutique. It's a, it's a lodge uh, at sea. Uh, and I think you're going to do great this year and you're going to give a, more, a lot more people a taste for it because this is the only way you're going to see Alaska this year. True, true. And let's see if we can't get you on board. Well, we'll see I what mean, happens. a couple old geezers like you and me, we got to get out there and play, my friend. I, I think we have to have a cruise road trip to get our vaccines up in Alaska together. I think that's what we got to do. Okay. And I, I'll, I'll, you, can, you can call me anybody. You can call me Blanchard. You can be whatever as long as you that back then. I, I'm, you know, we just don't mention it there. Now, now just tell us, tell us again, where can travel advisors go to get more information about UnCruise and your upcoming Alaska cruise season? Well, of course, the best place to start out is on our website at uncruise.com. And there is a beautiful online brochure right on the cover of our website that, you know, you can flip it up its page just like any other brochure. It even has the sound of pages flipping. So that's the best way to start. Get a little educated, see if it's right for your clients, and then give us a call. Send us a note, and uh, we're happy to talk to you. And I'm, I'm going to say part of this pivot that we've been doing, James, is that about uh, a third of our sales staff our expedition leaders, guides, and hotel managers from our boats. Right. That part of our business model is that they're helping to answer phones, and nobody can tell the story better than them. So you might call up and end up talking to an expedition leader. They, I, they, that's it. They should be able to sell me on, on what you got to do there. So anyway, <laughs> so it's www.uncruise.com. That's the yep. website, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Excellent. Listen, Dan, it was great to chat again, and, and I, I may take you up on that offer. Just, you know, tell me when you got a free cabin, and I'll be up there uh, up in Juneau. And you come along, too, and we're, we'll go get our vaccines and, and then go kayaking somewhere, okay? You're on. All right. Sounds good, James. I'm James Sillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>